Ezra chapter 3, verse 6, it says, From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. Although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid, they also gave money to the masons and the carpenters, food and drink, and oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre, to bring cedar logs from Lebanon to the sea, to Joppa, according to the permission which we had from Cyrus, king of Persia. Here is instruction of how this temple is going to be built, how, where the wood, the logs would come from, and basically where they were going to come from was from Joppa. That city sound familiar? Joppa in the Old Testament, we read that Jonah went to Joppa. It was a place of Gentiles. In the New Testament, we know that Peter went to Joppa because he had another Gentile to meet. Anybody remember his name? Cornelius, the Italian, the centurion, right? Something amazing happened there in Joppa. It was a picture where God gives a vision and says, don't call what I call clean, don't call it unclean. It was a picture about the Jews and the Gentiles coming together and becoming one. You know, Ephesians 2 talks a lot about that, where it says, man, God has broken down the middle wall of hostility and made the two one, Jew and Gentile. But see, God's plan was speaking of that even in the first temple, Solomon's temple. Do you know, Chronicle says that that temple was built from the wood from Joppa from Gentiles. God is doing the same thing here. I find this incredible. If you go back to Ezra chapter 3 verse 1, amazing it says, and when the seventh month had come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man in Jerusalem. What's going to bring freedom in worship when we have freedom to worship as one? We're not there. Jesus prayed this in John 17. Oh, Father, make them one. One. Like you and I are one in there. Let let them see what we see. And the byproduct of their freedom is we're coming to Jerusalem to see the king as one. Let me tell you what, we're so divided today. And if, if you're wondering why don't we see a greater move of God's spirit, there are some theologians that try and just, oh, well, that was just for the apostles' day. That's why we don't see that. No, we just don't see it because we're not one like we need to be. See, in the upper room, the spirit of God fell. It was because they were one accord, right? That's what brings the blessing of God. Because check it out, folks, there's only one body of Jesus, And it ain't a Baptist, or Methodist, or Catholic, or Presbyterian. But we live in a society today that I think that is more divided than I've ever seen. It's incredible. We have a demonic infiltration of lies and division coming through the media today. Oh, child of God, don't buy into that, please. You know, it's just meant to divert our focus off what really matters, which is the blood. Because it's not about the color of your skin or the language you speak or the economical position you're in or what denomination you're in or whether you're a Calvinist or Armenius or whether you believe in the gift of the Spirit, you speak in tongues or you don't. Or it's, not a, it's about the blood. Because you see, in history, anyone who experienced freedom, there was, it was always preceded by blood, right? Always. And see, what binds us together in the body of Christ it's not social issues, folks. And I don't, I'm not trying to say this to be heartless, like, wow, I don't care about prejudice issues and racial issues. I, I just recognize what it is. It's just demonic. You know, it's demonic. And, and, and so it's not me trying to, I, I'm not, I don't empathize. I don't care about people that are going through stuff. No, I do. It's just I'm not going to be swayed by the enemy to take my focus, my eye off the ball, my eye off of Jesus, my eye off what makes us one. Don't be deceived. How do you know you're walking in freedom? When culture and race isn't an issue to you. When I go up to some of my favorite places to visit and have vacation in North Carolina and Tennessee and I walk into a church and it's all white people, I go, children of the corn, get me out of here. This is crazy, right? This is weird. I'm not comfortable in this, right? And if I walk into church and everyone's Hispanic, I go, Oh, where's, where's some white people? Where's some African-Americans? What's what? 
Because last time I read my Bible in heaven, it was every tongue, tribe, and nation, right? That's the way God sees it, right? And so if we're not seeing it that way, then we're in bondage and we're not as free as we think we are. Oh, no, no, brother. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I believe in equality and I believe that we're one in the body, but there's something unique about, you know, my particular heritage and, and, and my background and, and the persecution of my people. And the, let me tell you what. I know people that go down that road and I have some dear brothers and sisters that are Jewish and they have more focus on that they're Jewish than that they're Christian. I think that's a problem because it's about the bride of Christ. It's not about your physical earthly heritage. It's about the blood. It's always about the blood. Come on, say the blood, right? That's what brings freedom. We overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony in the blood of the lamb. It's not because, well, this is my denomination. This is my heritage. This is my culture. This is my skin color. Come on. There's a place where we have to stop listening to the voice of the enemy and the voice of this world and listen to the voice of the one true shepherd about the one body of Christ. Because let me tell you what, that's where there's freedom. Amen. It's a message that's not politically correct. I get it. I know some of you might feel that I'm shortchanging the importance of racial issues and that. I'm not. I'm just not going to be distracted from the gospel. And I'm not going to be distracted from having unity in the church and thinking that we can find unity in something other than Jesus. Jesus. 